Hello and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Starfield and we're going to be taking a look at Earth's solar system. So, uh, one of the more impressive things about this game is how well Bethesda actually implemented a lot of the physics and science and everything in the game, as well as the astronomy being relatively good. So, they obviously simplified things because, and as we'll get to, there's like a lot less of certain things, uh, but they focused on kind of the more important or name recognizable ones for the most part. Uh, now, I I actually like a lot of the other stuff I've looked into just roughly some of the distances we have for the closer star systems to ours in real life and how they're implemented in the game a lot of that is pretty good and we'll probably look at that in a future video but the system we have the most information about in real life is the, our solar system the soul system in this game uh, and so that's what we're gonna be looking at today and kind of seeing how accurate they got it what they got what right what they got wrong I'm excited to get into all that but let's just dive on in so you can see the solar system itself that you're probably pretty familiar with uh, in real life this one being the one we live in, they did a decent job of doing it. A, the planets are all, for the most part, scaled pretty accurately. Uh, so in comparison to each other and everything, they're not bad. They have implemented the rings pretty well. So you can see Saturn's rings being the most distinctive as they are in real life, but also the less distinct but still existent rings around uh, Uranus, Jupiter, and Neptune like they are in real life. You can see that there's quite a few moons, not nearly as many as there are in real life, but we'll get to that. I love it. I, and another thing that I really love is how they show the gravitational fields for planets and stars in this game. I really, really enjoy that. I like seeing, like, you can see a relatively small gravitational field here, and then you can see the distortions from the planets that are closer to it, and much larger distortions from planets like Jupiter that have a very large mass. Uh, it's fun when you go to other systems with, like, much larger blue giant type stars where you can see a much larger gravitational distortion. It's just really cool that they included that. They didn't need to because as far as I can tell, it doesn't have a gameplay effect. It's just a cool, a cool way of showing the size and scale of things. I really enjoy that. Uh, we're starting, uh, we'll start our discussion. We're parked over here by Uranus because I like to be parked by Uranus, uh, but we'll start inside at the at Mercury, the closest one to the sun, and move out from there. Uh, I wish that they would have a pop-up for the different stars to show you what type of star it is, what sort of mass it has, all that sort of stuff would be really, really cool, uh, but they don't have that, but you can do that for the rest of the celestial body, so uh, all of your planets and moons. So starting with Mercury, we are the closest to the sun here. You can see that it is a barren type gravity of 0 0.38 and as far as I can tell they're comparing that to earth so all of the gravities in this game are as far as I can tell they're comparing that to earth so uh earth being one for the gravity unit so that's the normal gravity that we experience in real life everything else is going to be measured in comparison to earth so this one has uh, 0 0.38 so it's significantly lighter than that of earth uh the temperature is inferno which checks out as far as we can tell mercury is hot as hell being super close to the sun uh no atmosphere no magnetic Atmosphere, no fauna, no flora, no water. Makes sense. Uh, you can find helium, aluminum, and whatever ND is. I don't remember what that uh, the chemical sign is for that. But uh, so you can get resources on Mercury. You can visit Mercury. Uh, but uh, it's hot as hell, and there's nothing there. So that checks out. Uh, also, in real life, Mercury doesn't have any moons, so it makes sense that it doesn't have any in this game. So uh, that's relatively accurate. They got Mercury right. The second planet in the solar system being Venus. This one is also relatively well done. Venus also has no moons. In in real life. Uh, and so this one is also a rock. This one is at 0.9 for gravity, so almost the same as Earth's, so still a little bit lighter. Uh, temperature is also an inferno. The atmosphere, which it does have, has extra CO2 and it's corrosive. Uh, I have no idea if Venus's atmosphere is corrosive in real life. I do know that uh, it's very Earth-like in the solar system. It's probably the, mo the planet that's most similar to Earth, but because it's closer, it seems that uh, it's much, much hotter. And I believe I read, I've read that the atmosphere is acidic or whatever, so the corrosive atmosphere makes sense, and it also makes sense that there's no uh, fauna, flora, or water, so uh, as far as I can tell, that's pretty dang accurate. Uh, nothing to complain about with Venus. Moving on to Earth, this one's probably the least accurate, but that's intentional because this is set in an alternate future. Earth has no atmosphere here, so there is no, uh, well, it says thin CO2, and we're still at the same for gravity. Temperature is cold, which makes sense given the lack of an atmosphere. Uh, no fauna, no flora. The water is safe, so there is still water on Earth, despite not having an atmosphere, uh, so that's that's interesting. The resources don't make a lot of sense. There should be more resources considering most of the periodic table of elements in this game are just a recreation of the real periodic table of elements, which exists in real life. And almost all of those elements, or at least the naturally occurring ones, are present on Earth. So you'd think we'd be able to find all of them there. Uh, you can see we don't even have iron listed on this list for the uh, resources you can find on Earth. 
So whatever that is, that's relatively unrealistic. Also, like I said, considering there's no atmosphere and therefore most of Earth is barren now, uh, you're missing a lot of stuff. There are some historical landmarks, which I've showed in a previous video that you can visit. But other than that, Earth is basically empty. Uh, like real life, we do actually have a moon. So uh, you can see that Luna here is the moon for Earth. Same thing. Uh, has very light gravity, 0.17, so that's accurate. Uh, no fauna, no flora, no water, also accurate. There is iron on the moon, so that's good. I guess we've been getting all our iron from the moon all this time. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on on the moon. There is some facilities that you go to for story, stu story stuff, and you can find the Apollo landing site. So that's interesting on itself. Again, relatively accurate, I would say. Moving out to the fourth planet in our solar system, and the one that most people talk about a lot these days, we have Mars, which you can find right out here. This one is still relatively accurate because it's relatively simple. So Mars in real life has two moons. It does also in, in the game. We have Deimos and Phobos. And then on Mars, we have various things. The only historical one is the uh, Opportunity Rover, which you can find on Mars. Other than that, we've got a bunch of, you know, fake stuff made up for the game, uh, including Cydonia, which is Earth's settlement on Mars. Interesting fact that I would like to point out here, they've got an, a totally underground settlement on Mars. In the game, they haven't terraformed Mars or anything like that, so it has no uh, atmosphere. Uh, so with that being said, why didn't they just build an underground city on Earth, the planet that they already lived on and already had all of their resources on? That's the, like, I get moving to another planet that has an atmosphere and setting up a new society there. So New Atlantis makes sense to me. Living on Mars doesn't make sense to me. It would have been much easier and, like, feasible in every way to just build an underground city on Earth. <laughs> but, uh, with all that being said, the rest of the Mars information is accurate. It's a rock type. 0.38 for gravity, so lighter than Earth, but heavier than the Moon by a significant margin. Uh, cold temperature, thin CO2 for the atmosphere, no magnetosphere, no fauna, but apparently there's primordial flora, which is interesting because I haven't found any there, uh, and the water there is considered safe. So definitely a uh, pretty good job on this one. There's also a space station around Mars, so that doesn't exist in real life, but they do have the right amount of moons, and the planet itself has the right characteristics. Moving on to the fifth planet in the solar system, we have Jupiter, and this is where we start running into things where they definitely don't have it correct. So Jupiter is quite large, being a gas giant in one of the largest planets in the solar system. Uh, you can see we do have the lighter rings around Jupiter, which exist in real life, so that's nice. However, where we start running into problems with Jupiter is the moons. So you can see that they have given it four moons, and they are moons that exist. So we have Ganymede, Io, Callisto, and Europa. So all real moons, and probably the most notable moons for uh, Jupiter. That being said, in real life, Jupiter has... 95 moons, so they're missing a couple. Um, that being said, the rest of the information we have is relatively accurate. So like I said, Jupiter is a gas giant uh, because of its size and therefore much larger mass. It makes sense that we have a much higher gravity on there as well. It's interesting. I haven't actually tried to land on a gas planet yet. I'm gonna try it right here because I, I, I've been curious about this, but for some reason haven't tried it. Okay, yes, so you cannot land on a gas giant, which makes sense because, I mean, we don't know for sure what gas giants are like because we've never landed on them and recorded stuff as far as I'm aware. Uh, but presumably you can't land on something that doesn't have land mass. I, I don't know. It's hard for me to believe that there's nothing in a gas giant, but whatever. I don't know jack shit about gas giants. So that's Jupiter. Relatively accurate from what I could tell. Ganymede is an ice frozen block with nothing on it. Uh, Io is barren, frozen, no atmosphere, no magnetosphere, so nothing on it either. Uh, Callisto, same thing. Ice frozen, no atmosphere, no fauna, no flora. Europa, ice frozen, none, 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 none. So none of these moons are habitable, which makes sense because as far as we can tell in real life they are also not you know there's nothing on them and we would probably be able to tell considering they're pretty close to us uh celestially speaking so like i said total rating for jupiter not bad they did a good job on the size the rings uh the moons that do exist in the game are real uh as far as real moons go that being said they're missing 91 of the moons that jupiter has so definitely not uh perfect but still relatively well done moving out to our next planet we have saturn uh this one is another gas giant so this one has a gravity lower than jupiter just being at 1.14. Temperatures deep freeze. Atmosphere says H2. Magnetosphere is weak. No fauna, no flora, no water. All makes sense for a gas giant. Uh, this one has seven different moons uh, orbiting around it, which is pretty good. They did a good job with that, and I believe it might be the most moons of any planet in the entire game. Uh, that being said, they're still a little bit short, considering in real life Saturn has 146 moons. Uh, so yet again, they're missing a couple. Again, the ones that exist are real. So we have Titan, which is probably the one that most people know about. Uh, it has a settlement on it in this game. Uh, it's a rock type, 0.14 gravity, so 
about the same as Earth's moon. Uh, deep freeze, STD, N2 for the atmosphere. No magnetosphere, no fauna, no flora, and the water is safe. Outside of that, we have uh, Mimus, which is a frozen one, no nothing on it. Uh, Diony, which is another frozen one with nothing on it. Iapetus, which is another frozen one with nothing on it. Enceladus, I believe is how you pronounce that, or Enceladus, uh, another frozen one with nothing on it. Rhea, same thing. And Tethys, same thing. So uh, it is impressive that they decided to put as many moons as they did, but like I said, they're missing about 140 of them that exist in real life, uh, but not all that important considering all of them are just barren frozen rocks. So uh, again, not too bad. Saturn's relatively accurate. They're missing a lot of the stuff that exists in real life, but from what we can tell, they've gotten their information about it pretty good. So then moving out to our next planet in our solar system, we have Uranus or Uranus as those of us who are still considered cultured um, call it. This one, they did a pretty good job at. It's easier to be more accurate with these ones because they don't have nearly as many moons as Jupiter and Saturn do. They're still a little bit short and we'll get to that, but you know, we're going through it. Uh, the type for this one is an ice giant. So I believe, ah, no, we cannot land on it. So we also can't land on ice giants apparently, which is interesting. Uh, but so this one's going to be similar to Jupiter and Saturn in a way that it's a planet you can't land on. For some reason, they still tell us the gravity is almost as much as Earth. Temperatures deep freeze, H2 for the atmosphere, weak for the magnetosphere, no fauna, no flora, no water, which is interesting considering it's got ice on it, which is apparently not water. We have five moons around it, which are Umbriel, Oberon, Ariel, Titania, and Miranda. And so that's not bad. Five moons isn't bad. In real life, Uranus has 27 moons. These ones are all, again, going to be just frozen chunks with nothing on them, much like in real life, as far as we know. So relatively well done. Again, we're missing moons, so that's not great. We do have the rings, which I like, and it's also accurate that they are the rings that are uh, the other way. So in real life, when you look at the planets, how they're depicted, and then obviously I imagine people with access to much nicer telescopes and space imaging, you can see that all the rest of the rings kind of are canted off at a 90 degree angle from Uranus's. Uranus's are like straight up this way. <laughs> so they're unique from the rest of them. I like that they actually made it that way. And if you fly to these planets in the game, so where you can see them out in space, you can see the rings. So it's very cool. I definitely enjoy that. They did a good job on Uranus, but they are missing some moons. So not too many criticisms there but you know a couple moving on to our second to last planet in the solar system we have neptune way up here on the outside so this one is another ice giant so we can't land on it it's got uh gravity slightly uh higher than earth's which i guess makes sense given the fact that it's larger um it's got the deep freeze temperature h2 atmosphere weak magnetosphere no fauna no flora no water uh unknown resources given the fact that we can't land on it that checks out uh it has one moon which is triton a little bit short here from real life in real life there are 14 so we're missing 13 of uh neptune moons but given the fact that they're all probably just barren ice balls much like triton i guess it's fine that they didn't include the vast majority of the moons that exist for this planet other than that relatively accurate information from what i can tell and then out here we have the classic discussion is pluto a planet and i know some people would say it was a planet before it can be a planet again <laughs> but uh that extremely sound scientific argument aside we have the dwarf planet of pluto out here on the edge and so this one in real life pluto has five moons which you know is a little bit more than the one that we have here but at least we have one eh? most people kind of forget i mean most people nowadays forget that pluto even exists much less much less that it even has moons so uh yes pluto itself is an ice planet uh with a gravity of 0 0.06 so extremely low gravity uh the lowest one in the solar system temperature is a deep freeze atmosphere is none magnetosphere is none fauna flora are none and water is safe uh we do have some resources on this one as far as the moon we have charon one of the five moons that Pluto has in real life. It's a ice ball with nothing on it. So, interesting enough. Uh, I would say, on the whole, they did a pretty good job with Earth's solar system. We're missing 270 moons, but but other than that, they did a good job, and it's not all sci-fi bullcrap. So, I enjoy it. I think they did a good job. I'm gonna give them a passing grade here, I guess. I don't know why. I just wanted to do this today. So, that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video, but we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.